Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Well, there's been a few changes since I told you we were having a meeting. Let's see, I made my last video Thursday. I think it was after the meeting we had. Well, now we have six confirmed cases of coronavirus here in Alabama. Oops, sorry, not supposed to touch my face. Oh, my goodness. I can't get out of the habit. Nobody can. They talked about that at the meeting. How we just have to be diligent about washing our hands. Well, now, uh, okay, they've locked out every door. Uh, well, the front door gate is going to stay locked. The back door is going to stay locked. Everybody coming into this building has to come into the second door, second floor door. You know, get uh, their forehead checked for temperature they ask them all the questions have you traveled you know do you know anybody that's sick blah 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 and if they answer yes to anything they'll have to be turned away okay well uh and i've been watching some videos about what you know what things have happened in the last couple of days well um one lady was what was the name of that? Let me pull it up real quick. You may want to watch it. Um, it was not very, uh, not a very happy video, but uh, I mean, it is what it is now. You know, the president has declared a, a federal uh, state of emergency. Let's see, history is what I'm looking for. Martial law in Illinois. Now, what this lady was talking about... Threatened area. Whoa, sorry. She was loud. Uh, Hard News TV 2 is the name of the channel. Hard News TV 2. It's all spaced apart. And this is called March 13, 2020 Martial Law in Illinois. And she's reading all the things that the mayor of this town of Champaign gets to do. Things like take your house and set it up as a place to quarantine people. So if you got a big nice house with lots of bedrooms, you may have to get moved somewhere. I mean, seriously... You know, and other, other kinds of real estate as well. They can actually tell them, get your personal things and go. I mean, I, she's talking like they're going to take you to a FEMA camp. Well, you know, everybody goes there first thing. But hopefully nothing, none of this is going to lead to that while we're still here. Um... But anyway, you can uh, listen to what they're doing there. But what's the president's declaration of, um, well, he didn't call it martial law. Uh, oh, come on, brain. I'm tired. Of, uh, I'm tired. I've been wanting to make this video. I want to share these uh, few prophecies from Dawn's letter. And... Um, I thought I'd throw in a few of these other things. Um, what does he call it? Federal emergency, uh, emergency, uh, federal emergency. You know what I'm talking about. He's making a federal case out of it. <laughs> a national emergency. Okay. He's declared now the United States is under national emergency. All right. So can he do, will he do all these things? Sure they can. Boy, this lighting is terrible. I don't have any lights on at all over there. Well, one little one and two over here. I guess I'm going to have to make sure I have lights on in front. Of me not behind me anyway um, I 
I guess I'll just go on into reading this because it's at least encouraging. I think we probably all know more, more than we want to know about COVID-19. And, you know, um, I don't know if I want to mention this, but I guess... Okay, I guess I will because any extra prayers anybody has time for would be a good thing to pray for. I'm praying that nothing is going to come of this. I had my annual doctor's visit, you know, last week. I believe it was a week ago, Thursday. And all the lab work was coming back great my cholesterol and triglycerides were better than I'd ever seen them. I had been fasting for three days and just just in the morning and afternoon and I eat after six. But boy, I'm wondering if those three days of fasting is what brought my triglycerides down below the upper limit of normal. I was in the normal range, and it hadn't been there in years. Or is it the black seed oil and the turmeric? Anyway, um, they did all the testing they needed to do. My doctor is had, I got kicked out of hematology <laughs> back to my doctor because my labs were all looking good. Well, I found a message on my phone yesterday late afternoon. I don't look at it much. And I have to call hematology back and make an appointment. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. I They told me it was just still MGUS. That's a monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance. It's like pre-cancer, you know, and there's nothing you can do about it because it's so many people have it and a lot of people never convert to multiple myeloma. I think that's what it is. It's, it's a precursor to a type of blood cancer. And I'm just declaring that, no, I don't have that. I don't have it. I don't have it. I can't. I cannot have it. I cannot take one more thing. I can't take one more thing. Anyway, let's pray against that, okay? That Is it okay for me to refuse? Of course, I guess it is. I have to pray about it, I guess. I'm, I think the next thing they do is drill a hole in your hip to do a bone marrow biopsy. I don't want to know. I don't even want to go there. Anyway, I'm going to go to my emails, and we're going to talk about this now. Okay. This one is its called, it's titled, I Am Coming to Take My Saints Away. It's not very long. It was given on March 12, 2020, at 10.59 p.m. to an, a person named Emmanuel Acre. Has anybody heard of him? got to be him, Emmanuel. These are the words I was told to write down this week by the Lord. It's one sentence. I am coming, I'm sorry, it's more than one sentence, it's just not very long. I am coming to take my saints away. They will not know the time but you will see it happen. 
Each of you must prepare in his heart. This is not the end. Strangely worded. So we take it to the Lord. I'm coming to take my saints away. However God wants to word it, I pray it's from Him and it's any day now. Relevant scriptures. Proverbs 16, 1-6 The preparations of our heart belong to man, but the I'm sorry, did I say Revelation or Proverbs? In my head I heard Revelation. It's Proverbs 16, 1 through 6. The preparations of the heart belong to man, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. All the ways of a man are pure in his own eyes. But the Lord weighs the spirits. Commit your works to the Lord and your thoughts will be established. The Lord has made all for himself, yes, even the wicked, for the day of doom. Everyone proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. The Lord hates pride. Though they join forces, none will go unpunished. In mercy and truth, atonement is provided for iniquity, and by the fear of the Lord, one departs from evil. Okay, and then they've added Revelation 1, 7. I'll read it, and then I'm going to tell you my, my opinion. Behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him, even they who pierced him. And all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so, amen. Well, According to this prophecy, it says, They will not know the time, but you will see it happen. So, if that's the case, it's not a secret rapture. Everyone on earth will see Jesus in the clouds. Which is another reason I think the earth is not revolving. Because if he's coming from a certain point. And we were doing this down here. Wouldn't it look like we'd see him and then we wouldn't see him. And then we'd see him and then we wouldn't see him. <coughs> right? <coughs> yes? <coughs> Just a minute. Okay. I'll do, uh, I'll review the rest, do a part two if I need to. I'll plead the blood of Jesus over this part. Anyway, uh, someone's at the door, and um, I will talk to y'all later. Bye for now.